In this final session, we'll take a look at everything that we've covered in the course and how we make use of all these learnings to build an export strategy. Congratulations on having reached this far and please refer to the reference documents prepared under the program for any additional details from the course. We want to thank you for having participated and we look forward to welcoming you again soon. In this session, we will bring all elements that we have learnt in the modules covered during the course and summarize the considerations for building cooperatives export strategy. We will also introduce sources for cooperatives to find support. There is a feedback loop in the development of an export strategy, whereby cooperatives will continue to revisit the assumption and actions throughout the planning, implementation, and monitoring. For example, an event like the COVID-19 pandemic that appears during the implementation period will urge the cooperative to go back to their planning table to consider diversifying the export markets, trade partners, and logistics arrangement, as well as to assess the risk of delayed payment, contract termination, etc. Having a clear vision and goal will help direct your export development endeavor. As Franklin Roosevelt, the 32nd U.S. president, said, the only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. It is important for cooperatives to lay out their values, vision, mission, strategic objectives, and an action to guide their X strategy. Values represent what you stand for. Vision looks at what you aspire to achieve. Mission is what you do it for. Objectives refer to how much of what will be accomplished by when, and strategy refers to how the progress will be achieved. Finally, the action plan sets out what has to be and key performance indicators, also known as KPIs, provide a way of measuring the results. We will now look at some of these elements of the strategic planning framework more closely. Let us first consider the vision. An organization's vision describes what the organization hopes to become in the future. The vision can act as a compass to guide the development of the organization in the long term and should be a rallying call for change or alignment amongst the stakeholders. A vision focuses on the future and outlines what the organization will eventually look like. The vision is also a key tool to inspire the people in the organization and motivate them to work together toward the organization's goals. To build a vision statement, cooperatives can start by imagining themselves five or ten years in the future. The outcome of this and vision is captured in the vision statement. The vision statement should be specific but also short and simple. One example of a vision statement is to become a known brand in European markets as quality Vietnamese product. Second, we will consider the strategic objectives. A cooperative's export strategy will require one or more strategic objectives to define the detailed actions for execution. A good strategy should be visionary and directional and, at the same time, compatible with the cooperative's overall business goals for a specific period, for example, three to five years. It is important to consider and set strategic objectives in line with the cooperative's export visions and cascade to a more specific detail level till actions. The set objectives will provide the direction for making strategic choices and an action plan. In setting the objectives and goals for the cooperative's exports, it is all to adopt the SMART criteria. These criteria are Specific Your goal should include details of what you want to accomplish clearly. Measurable Your goal should come with specific criteria that measure your progress. Achievable Your goal should be attainable, not impossible to achieve. Realistic you should be able to reach your goal if you put in the time, effort, and necessary resources. Timely. Your goal should come with a clearly defined timeline, including start and end dates. One example of a strategic objective would be expanding exports to reach a term of 10 million US dollars by 2025 and achieving a profit of 1.5 million US dollars to finance production expansion. Let us now look at the action plan. An action plan lays out the tasks that cooperatives need to complete to accomplish the vision and strategic objective. It also breaks up the process of achieving the objective into time-bound actionable assignments. The strategic choices to make at this stage, based on the assessment conducted previously on current production, market potential and market requirements, may cover which countries to enter, the routes to entry, and where to allocate the cooperative's resources among others. An action plan can be created following five steps. Set the goals. Create a list of actions. Set a timeline. Designate resources. Monitor the progress. 
please take a moment to look at the example of an action plan provided on the slide. It consists of the overall goal, the actions required to achieve that goal, a clear assignment of responsibilities for each action and a clear timeline for the completion of the actions. Furthermore, the plan outlines the resources required for each action and an indicator that can show the level of achievement for each action. More than 98% of all Vietnamese cooperatives are of small size, with less than 50 employees. Considering the size of most cooperatives in Vietnam, there is a need to leverage existing national support programs available to exporters. In this session, we will introduce the various sources for cooperatives to get information on existing support programs. Cooperatives can get in touch with these institutions to seek support in getting information on market access and potential buyers, as well as on capacity building programs and guidance on export. First, cooperatives can reach out to the trade offices under the Ministry of Industry and Trade which are divided into four divisions Geographical Region, European Market Division, Asia-Pacific Market Division, American Market Division, Africa West Asia South Asia Market Division. The cooperatives can follow the Facebook pages of these divisions to learn about upcoming events on business matchmaking, trade fairs, and trade exhibitions. Second, cooperatives should fight trade established under the Ministry of Industry and Trade. Vitrade is tasked with advising and assisting the Minister of Industry and Trade in state management of trade promotion and branding, as well as in coordinating trade promotion, branding, and investment promotion activities for industry and trade development. Vitrade frequently holds trade fairs, missions to foreign markets, which cooperatives can follow and benefit from. Another entity that cooperatives can reach out to is the Trade Promotion Center for Agriculture, also known as Agritrade established under the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Agritrade is tasked with organizing and implementing trade promotion activities in the agricultural sector, providing information, communication, market forecast and agricultural product trade partnership, consulting and supporting the development of one commune one product products and rural tourism services, providing training, coaching and technology transfer on agricultural trade promotion, agricultural product brand development and international cooperation on cultural trade promotion. Agritrade also frequently hold trade fairs in Vietnam and foreign markets. Cooperatives should register and follow the news on the Agritrade to get information on and participate in these events where possible. The investment and trade promotion centers, such as the Ho Chi Minh City IPTC, frequently holds and training workshops, free of charge, for businesses on import, export, and utilization of free trade agreements. The Vietnam Chamber of Commerce and Industry and its WTO Center also provide prolific sources of information and guides on international trade, including guides on trade measures and FTAs. VCC also frequently cooperates with other institutions to hold capacity building workshops that cooperatives can participate in free of charge. Vietnam Women Union, VWU, and its provincial chapters often provide capacity building and supporting programs targeting women, in collaboration with other international and national agencies. Women-led cooperatives, therefore, can reach out to the relevant women unions in their localities to obtain information on supporting programs, especially in expanding production and export development. People Committees, Decision No. 1719 of the Prime Minister designates People Committee to be in charge of budgeting, planning, guiding the imitation of the national target program for the socio-economic development of ethnic minorities and mountainous areas at the provincial level. Cooperatives therefore could reach out to the People Committee inquiring the details of supporting programs for ethnic minorities and mountainous areas in expanding production and export development. Let us now move on to implementation of the export strategy. Before looking at the elements for implementation, we would like to highlight that, considering the structure of the Vietnamese cooperative system, there is a need for collective actions such as joint market research, joint distribution, joint marketing under the Vietnam Cooperative Alliance system. These joint activities will help the cooperatives to reduce costs and achieve an economy of scale in export development. To implement the export strategy, cooperatives should consider a number of steps. Appointing specialized personnel to lead the export development activities. The senior managers of the cooperative should be closely engaged and dedicate time to the implementation of export development activities. Ensuring that personnel have the resources and systems they need, such as computers, document filing systems, etc., to implement the export strategy activities. 
making detailed planning ahead on how the cooperatives will organize marketing, sales, and delivery to reach the market, working with the banks and other trade promotion agencies on how to obtain export finance, as well as the suitable terms of trade, including delivery terms and payment methods, and using the export strategy as an active management tool and regularly update. This slide shows some do's and don'ts that you should consider during the implementation phase. Let us first look at what you should do. Key staff members must be committed to executing the export strategy. Their dedication will drive the success of the export endeavor. Consult with local authorities, banks, partners, pendant advisors. Their expertise will provide valuable insights and guidance. It's essential to review the strategy with staff and advisors regularly. This will ensure alignment with company goals and market dynamics. It is important to assign responsibility to staff for individual tasks as this leads to accountability and efficient execution. It is also crucial to plan for potential changes such as to the market environment or changes in trade regulations. Finally, you should also ensure that you have the necessary human and financial resources to implement the strategy. While focusing on new opportunities, you must also maintain your existing customer base and having resources will ensure that they are not neglected. Now, on to the more important part, the don'ts. Avoid creating cumbersome, static strategy documents which can be difficult to navigate and may not be easily adaptable. Furthermore, it is key not to impose unrealistic timelines which can lead to frustration and failure. F a strategy left untouched will not yield results. You should regularly consult the strategy and update it to ensure relevance to current circumstances. As mentioned earlier, the export strategy should be a living document. Indicators of achievement should be built as part of the action plan and should be used to monitor implementation of the export strategy. Furthermore, cooperatives should engage in a should do a stock taking exercise of all the activities done and progress made periodically, for example, every six months or annually. The result of this stock taking exercise should be benchmarked against the indicators of achievement in the action plan. The implementation of the strategy should be closely monitored. This exercise will provide the cooperatives with indications of whether the cooperatives is on track with the action plan, whether there should be any amendments to the action plan and whether well export strategy reflects the changes in the situation. Managing risks is an important part of exporting to ensure profitability and financial stability. There are several categories of risks to consider including commercial, macroeconomic, political and natural risks. Examples of these risks include frauds, exchange rate fluctuations, civil unrest or natural disaster. Not all these risks will happen to the cooperative's exports or to all export shipments. However, it is important to keep in mind the different risks and the mitigation strategy. The cooperatives can build and update their risk management plan as part of the export strategy. There are several factors that cooperatives should consider when working or up their risk management plans. Let us look at some of these factors. First, differences in language, currency and business practices can complicate export activities. Secondly, securing payment form customers can be lengthy and complicated. Also, large high-value orders often result in longer cycles than expected. Additionally, international trade transactions involve a lot more authorities such as customs, banks, insurers, carriers among others. Last but not least, each foreign market presents its own unique risks. These range from import restrictions to political changes, economic instability, poor infrastructure, and intellectual property infringements. Therefore, integrating risk management into the export strategy is vital for cooperatives venturing into international markets and navigating the complexities of international trade effectively. This brings us to the end of the course. We thank you for your participation. And we hope that you found the modules interesting and useful. We wish you all the best in your export endeavors.